The year is 1939, a time of tension and apprehension. Picture this. Europe is in a state of unease. The Great War has ended only two decades prior, and the wounds of the conflict are still raw. Yet, the winds of war begin to stir once more, this time emanating from Germany. A new power has risen, a man who would become synonymous with evil and destruction, Adolf Hitler. His Nazi party, with its chilling swastika, has gripped Germany in a fervor of nationalism and racial purity. Hitler's grand vision of a Third Reich, a German empire that would last a thousand years, was taking shape. His fiery speeches and charismatic persona had enthralled the masses, but his intentions were far from peaceful. Hitler had his sights set on expansion, and he was prepared to achieve it through any means necessary. Meanwhile, the world watched with bated breath. Some leaders chose appeasement, hoping to avoid another devastating war. Others, however, began to prepare for the inevitable. The storm was brewing, and it was only a matter of time before it would burst. And burst it did. On September 1st, German forces invaded Poland, breaching the nation's borders and raining destruction upon its people. It was a blatant act of aggression, a clear sign that Hitler had no intention of abiding by the treaties of peace. The world could no longer stand by and watch. This act was the spark that ignited the powder keg. Britain and France, bound by their promise to protect Poland, declared war on Germany. Other nations soon followed suit, aligning themselves on opposing sides of the conflict. The chess pieces were set and the game of war had begun. And thus the world was plunged into a war of a scale never seen before. Two factions emerged, shaping the course of this global conflict. As the tensions of World War II escalated, countries around the globe chose sides, forming two major alliances, the Allies and the Axis powers. First, let's delve into the Allies. This faction was composed of several nations, but the key players were the United Kingdom, the United States, and the Soviet Union. Each of these nations was led by a figure that would become synonymous with their country's war efforts. From the United Kingdom, we had Winston Churchill, a man of indomitable spirit, whose rousing speeches echoed across the airwaves and bolstered the morale of a nation under siege. The United States was governed by Franklin D. Roosevelt, a leader who navigated his country through the Great Depression and into the war. Meanwhile, the Soviet Union was under the iron fist of Joseph Stalin, whose ruthless tactics and strategies were as feared as they were effective. On the other side of the coin, we find the Axis powers. The three major nations here were Germany, Italy and Japan. At the helm of Germany was Adolf Hitler a man whose name is now synonymous with tyranny and genocide. His aggressive policies and ideologies led to the invasion of numerous countries. In Italy, Benito Mussolini ruled with an iron hand, embodying the fascist ideology that was spreading across Europe. Japan, under the rule of Emperor Hirohito, sought to expand its empire in the East, leading to a series of conflicts that would draw the United States into the war. The alliances were not just about the leaders at the helm, but also about the millions of men and women who served under them. It was about the strategies they devised, the ideologies they represented, and the resources they commanded. These factions, with their unique strengths and weaknesses, their shared goals and conflicting interests, were about to clash in a series of battles that would determine the fate of the world. These alliances set the stage for the battles that would ensue. The chessboard was set, the pieces were in place, and the world held its breath as it awaited the next move. The war was marked by crucial battles that shifted the tides of power. The Battle of Stalingrad, often considered the deadliest battle in human history, was a turning point in World War II. The Soviet Union and Nazi Germany clashed in a ferocious months-long battle that raged from August 1942 until February 1943. This brutal confrontation saw the Red Army successfully defend the city of Stalingrad from the German onslaught. The victory came at a high cost, but it marked the beginning of a series of Soviet offensives that would eventually push the German forces back to Berlin. Across the globe, the Pearl Harbor attack was another pivotal moment. On a quiet Sunday morning in December 1941, 
The Imperial Japanese Navy Air Service launched a surprise military strike on the United States naval base at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. This unprovoked attack brought the United States into the war, joining the Allies against the Axis powers. The entry of the United States, with its vast resources and industrial power, dramatically altered the balance of the conflict. And then there was the Normandy invasion. Known as D-Day, this was the largest seaborne invasion in history. On June 6, 1944, Allied forces stormed the beaches of Normandy in France in a daring operation that marked the beginning of the end for Nazi Germany. The successful invasion opened a new front in Western Europe, forcing German forces to fight on multiple fronts and hastening their eventual defeat. Each of these battles was a turning point, a moment of stark choice and decisive action. They were brutal and bloody, yet they changed the course of the war. From the icy streets of Stalingrad to the tranquil waters of Pearl Harbor and the sandy beaches of Normandy, these locations bore witness to the fierce determination of those who fought. These decisive battles shaped the trajectory of World War II. Each one altered the balance of power shifted alliances and, ultimately, determined the outcome of a conflict that defined a generation. Amidst the chaos of war, humanity witnessed its darkest hour. As World War II raged on, a shadow loomed over Europe, a horrifying spectacle that would forever scar the face of history, the Holocaust. This was not war as we traditionally perceive it, a clash of armies on the battlefield. This was a calculated, systematic extermination of an entire people based solely on their religious and ethnic identity. The Jewish population primarily, but not exclusively, found themselves the target of a genocidal campaign of an unprecedented scale. Concentration camps such as Auschwitz, Dachau and Treblinka, among many others, became the sites of mass murder. These were not prisons, they were factories of death. In these grim places, millions of innocent men, women and children were stripped of their dignity, their freedom and ultimately their lives. People were transported from all over Europe, crammed into overcrowded trains and sent to these camps. Upon arrival, they were divided. Those deemed fit to work were sent into forced labour while the rest were sent directly to gas chambers. The victims were dehumanised, reduced to mere numbers and treated as disposable. But the Holocaust was not the only war crime committed during World War II. There were numerous incidents of mass killings, forced labour and brutal, inhumane treatment of prisoners of war and civilians alike. The rape of Nanking in China, the atrocities committed in the Pacific Theatre, the brutal forced labour of the Soviet gulags, and countless other incidents stand as a testament to the depth to which humanity can sink in times of conflict. War crimes were committed by all sides, reflecting a disregard for international law, human rights and common decency. They were not isolated incidents, but rather a pervasive and insidious part of the war. These atrocities stand as a grim reminder of the horrors of war. They serve as a stark warning about the potential for human cruelty and the crucial importance of preventing such horrors from ever happening again. They are a call to remember, to learn and to strive for a world where such inhumanity is no longer conceivable. By 1945, the world held its breath as the war reached its climax. The canvas of conflict had been painted with the blood and sacrifice of millions. Yet, the final brush strokes were yet to be drawn. Strokes that would forever change the face of warfare and humanity as we know it. In the Pacific, the war raged on. The Allies had been steadily reclaiming territory from Japan, yet the cost in lives was staggering. The Battle of Okinawa alone had claimed the lives of over 100,000 Japanese and 20,000 Americans. The end was in sight, but the price to be paid was unspeakably high. Then, on the 6th of August, the world was introduced to a new kind of terror. The United States, with the approval of its allies, dropped an atomic bomb on the city of Hiroshima. The devastation was unimaginable. Over 70,000 people died instantly, with thousands more perishing in the aftermath. Three days later, a second bomb was dropped on Nagasaki. Another 20 to 40,000 lives were extinguished in an instant. Japan, already on the brink of collapse, could hold out no longer. 
On the 15th of August, Emperor Hirohito announced Japan's surrender, bringing an end to the hostilities. The world gave a collective sigh of relief, yet it was a sigh tinged with apprehension. The atomic age had begun. The scale of destruction wrought by these two bombs was a grim testament to the power humanity now wielded. It was a power that demanded responsibility, a responsibility that would test nations in the years to come. The aftermath of World War II was a time of reckoning. War criminals were tried and punished, nations were rebuilt, and the world began the long process of healing. Yet the scars of this conflict would remain, a poignant reminder of the cost of war. And so, in a world forever changed, World War II came to an end. It was an end that marked the beginning of a new era. An era that saw the rise and fall of empires, the birth of nations, and a world forever scarred by the horrors of total war.